Pixar have always been one of my favourite studios. Their films possess an almost unparalleled ability to make us view things from unique viewpoints that have rarely or never been depicted on screen before. Pixar have made films from the perspective of toys, insects, machines, and even inside the human brain itself. And if these films share one common theme, it's the idea that there are hidden worlds wherever we look, small ecosystems that are built and shaped by the way humans interact with the world, but are rarely ever noticed or given the time of day. In much of Pixar's early work, human beings are never really the focal point of the action, and yet their presence dominates the worlds that Pixar's protagonists inhabit. They are crucial to their stories. In Toy Story, human beings are the things which give toys purpose, but they're also the things that can create fear, crush dreams, and motivate revenge. In Monsters Inc, an entire sub-economy is dependent on human beings for survival. Without them, the inhabitants of Monstropolis would be destitute. In Finding Nemo and Ratatouille, it is a brief contact with humanity that motivates the plot. <coughs> Even in films like A Bug's Life or The Incredibles, where these systems are less overt, there is a notion of ecosystems and worlds colliding. The ants and grasshoppers of Bug's Life are locked in a vicious battle and yet all of the action takes place on an ant hill, almost invisible to the human eye. Likewise, the superheroes of The Incredibles are ostracised from normal society because of their difference. To fit in, they must learn to act like human beings and be super in secret. And of course there is Wally, where the damage that humans have wreaked onto the earth shapes not only the world which the protagonist inhabits, but also gives him his his purpose. Wally is left alone and abandoned because human beings have forgotten about him. He is from a world which they no longer recognise or want to acknowledge. Across all of these films, Pixar not only draw our attention to these hidden worlds, but also point to how our actions, however small, have mass reverberations across a variety of ecosystems. As Pixar have long maintained, the core value that underpins the world of Toy Story is that toys deeply want children to play with them, and this desire drives their hopes, fears, and actions. For the characters of Toy Story, children are the be-all and end-all of existence, and yet so often they are taken for granted. For all the humanity that Pixar gives these toys, they are still seen as objects. Throughout the Toy Story trilogy, toys are abandoned, replaced, and damaged, and these actions have a massive impact for their characters, which go unseen to the humans in the film. Jessie's abandonment shapes her personality and makes her suspicious and guarded, and yet to her owner Emily, Jessie is simply a relic from the past, an object she got bored of and never gave a second thought to. For the most part, the humans in Toy Story never really see any retribution for their actions. Instead, it is toys themselves that suffer, whether it be at the hands of an emotionally abusive toy like Stinky Pete, or the brutal dictatorship that is formed from Lotso's deep resentment towards the child that abandoned him years ago. All of these conflicts and emotions are born out of small actions in our world, and yet they have massive ramifications for the characters that we have come to know and love. Likewise, in Finding Nemo, it is the arrival of a human being which causes the chain of events which comes to fundamentally change Marlin and Nemo's relationship. For the scuba diver who takes Nemo, he is simply grabbing something to be displayed in a pet store, a sentient object for other humans to look at, and yet in doing so, he disturbs a complex ecosystem replete with schools, different cultures, and its own food chain. This small action turns this community upside down, brings people from different walks of life together and inspires a legend. And the person who triggers this event is never seen again. They are ignorant. They never see the fallout from their actions. It is this notion of the seemingly inconsequential having massive ramifications that govern many of the worlds that Pixar introduces us to. Something as small as rain creates a scene reminiscent of a war zone in a bug's life, whilst the arrival of a sock in the world of Monsters Inc. reduces an entire room into a fit of hysteria. In Ratatouille, an ecosystem is birthed from the items we choose to throw away. Our waste disposal systems create a means by which rats are able to keep themselves sustained and forms the backbone of their survival. And of course, there is the Pixar film that peddles this most overtly, Wally -E, and its exploration of climate change. Wally's -E entire existence is shaped by the consequences of small human actions, an unwillingness to compromise our lifestyles has left our planet uninhabitable and destitute. In its place exists a robot who makes our trash his lifestyle. He forms shelter, watches old movies, and collects objects which catch his eye. Through stuff that we have disregarded, he finds purpose and meaning to his own existence. In Wally, -E, Pixar holds not only a mirror to humanity, but a microscope. Scope, demonstrating how the smallest, seemingly inconsequential actions can result in chaos for others. The wanton destruction that Wally -E showcases also points towards a broader theme across much of Pixar's work, that human beings are forces of destruction and chaos. In Toy Story and Finding Nemo, human children are seen as creatures that leave the film's protagonists in a state of sheer terror. Viewed from Woody's perspective, Sid's abuse of his toys recalls a torture chamber of sorts. And yet if we did not see Sid through the toy's eyes but our own, it is likely we would write him off as a a troubled kid who is essentially harmless. 
In the world of Toy Story, he is a monster, and when the toys see how dangerous he is, we feel their fear, we feel their terror. Likewise, Darla's mistreatment of fish could be rationally explained as simple in experience. She isn't old enough to treat them properly, and this is something she'll learn as she gets older. But in Finding Nemo, she is portrayed as a figure that incites pure terror, a hellish creature that must be avoided at all costs. Pixar are obsessed with how the seemingly harmless can appear utterly terrifying when examined from a new perspective. When Hopper dies in a bug's life, the scene in which he is dropped into the mouth of a group of hungry chicks is horrific. I mean, look at this bit. Through clever point of view framing, we see these creatures as giant ravenous monsters who are literally going to tear Hopper apart. And yet the birds aren't exactly villains per se, they're just hungry and they don't have any consideration for the fact that the insects are sentient. Through this, Pixar shows us that terror isn't always caused by deliberately provocative acts, rather it is caused through ignorance or for survival. This theme is again most overt in Wally, where progressive carelessness towards our planet has rendered Earth totally uninhabitable. Whilst this may cast human beings as, at best, misguided and at worst destructive, I don't think that Pixar's approach to this is wholly negative, nor do I think it's the kind of sneering nihilism that shows like Rick and Morty revel in. The central theme that runs throughout Pixar's work is that whilst these hidden worlds are often neglected or poorly treated by human beings, both worlds can be changed for the better when they learn to respect and cooperate with one another. Whilst it is often children that cause misery for the toys in Toy Story, it's still the love from owners like Andy and Bonnie who treat their toys with care and compassion that ultimately gives the toys their purpose and happiness. Although the characters and monsters in may start off afraid of children, it is Sully's relationship with Boo which ultimately saves the city's energy crisis, allowing the monsters to form a mutually beneficial relationship with children based on laughter and not fear. And in Wally, the planet is eventually restored through cooperation between man and machine, the humans learning respect for their environment through the lessons that Wally and Eva are able to teach them. Even in films such as A Bug's Life and Finding Nemo, where human beings do not get this type of redemption, there is still an acknowledgement that cooperation between people from different walks of life results in a push towards the greater good. It is through cooperation rather than distrust that the ants from Bug's Life are able to work together with the circus bugs to thaw the grasshoppers. Similarly, it is a fish's relationship with a bird, a creature that would normally view fish as food, that ultimately allows Nemo to return to the ocean. And it is this coming together of marginalised groups that really is the recurrent theme that continues to run through Pixar's work today. Whether it be an old man and a child from a minority background, the world of the living and the dead, or a group of rigid personalities which must learn to cooperate, Pixar have always focused primarily on showing us how, if we put our differences aside, then we can move toward a better future. Pixar's films routinely allow us to question ourselves, our beliefs, our values, and how our behaviours might affect those around us. Whilst the perspectives we experience may be unique, Pixar never makes them feel alien, instead allowing us to gain an appreciation for worlds we may previously have overlooked. For Pixar, every action that people take has a ripple effect, and whilst we may be watching the world through the eyes of toys, insects or even monsters, we are ultimately reminded of what it means to be human. <coughs> So, we didn't think we'd be doing this, but um, someone has actually donated $100, which is incredible. Yeah. Thank um, you very much, Dr. Chike. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, that's awesome. You are, as we said in our Patreon video, literally keeping the lights on. So, um, no, but seriously, thank you very much. And, um, yeah. Yeah, we're just sort of in shock, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. <laughs>